Welcome to Flame University's exclusive webinar on navigating the digital marketing terrain, exploring career avenues. I am Sunilesh Patabial, a student ambassador at Flame University and your virtual MC for today. A very good afternoon to all. I take immense pleasure in welcoming all of you. Flame Upskill's primary goal is to assist high school students in developing crucial skills for their learning and growth. In this series, you will explore areas outside of your courses which will help build your profile for higher education, which we all are looking forward to. Now, yes, this is something important and which most of you will be interested in. Attendees who complete the entire session will be given a letter of participation, but for that, you have to fill a form which I'll be sharing in the chat box at the end. So I'll be posting the link in the as a feedback form in the chat section. All of you must fill in in order to receive your letter of participation. This is a required procedure, so don't miss this if you want your letter of participation. Today's session, Navigating the Digital Marketing Terrain, will be taken by Professor Rohit Tiwari. Professor Rohit Tiwari is a faculty at Flame University of Digital Marketing. He has eight years of work experience and was associated with Densu Web Chutney, iKnowledge Factory Private Limited, and Bird's Eye Vision Consulting Private Limited. He holds a bachelor's degree in commerce from Pune University and postgraduate diploma in management communications from Flame School of Communications. He has worked in search engine marketing, social media marketing, and has a an hands-on experience in web analytics and app attribution tools. It's a pleasure to have you amongst us, sir. I'm confident that the students will feel more knowledgeable by the end of this session. Over to you. Thanks a lot, Sunilesh. So, uh... First of all, I would like to thank the Upskill series at Flame for going ahead and coordinating and organizing this uh, for students. So let's get started. I'll just quickly go ahead and share my screen. Just let me know when you can see my screen. Is this visible? Your screen is visible, sir. Okay, so I'll just add to the uh, quickly to the introduction part also. My last corporate stint, uh, guys, was with Dinsu Web Chutney, wherein I dealt with I went ahead and did digital marketing campaigns for brands like Max Fashion, TI Cycles, Forever 21. And I'm also a Flame alumni. So I went ahead, I went ahead and did my uh, MBA at Flame in 2000, back in 2015. Uh, and so that that's how my digital marketing career sort of began. So we went ahead and I remember we went ahead and participated in Google Online Marketing Challenge, uh, which is a competition by Google where Google goes ahead and gives you certain budgets that you can go ahead and utilize in order to in order to uh, do online campaigns and participate in the competition. So I still remember we had Vega Helmets as, as our client and we went ahead and, and spent the budgets, although were very small, but the kind of work that we did was recognized. We were the Asia Pacific winners for Google Online Marketing Challenge. And because of that, Google ended up inviting us to their Singapore headquarters. And as as uh, as you know, fresh uh, MBA students, we we went to Google Singapore headquarters, and that was a great experience. That's basically how my digital uh, career began. So what I'm going to go ahead and do with this particular session is try and focus on what are the different kinds of different kinds of skills that are required for you to go ahead and do well in this particular area or category. So I have this question for all of you. Uh, what is digital marketing for you? Uh, I'm very sure that all of you are on different kinds of platforms. In fact, your understanding about the platforms will be way better than me. So I'm going to try and help you with the marketing side of things, try and tell you uh, what are the different kinds of areas. So yeah, I, I had a quick question for all of you. What is digital marketing for you? If you can, you what you can do is if there are any, if anybody wants to unmute, and answer, you can just raise your hand and Sunilesh will help us to uh, help you to unmute and you can go ahead and ask the question, uh, answer the question directly. Arnav, I think, wants to uh, go ahead and give it a try. We have Arnav and... Okay, uh, I think uh, Arnav has lowered his hand we have uh yeah go ahead if i'm pronouncing it right amber yeah yeah that's right that's right yeah so for me uh wait can you guys hear me 
am i audible yes you are audible you are yes audible. so for me digital marketing is more about reaching a larger audience than uh, you currently are like visible to i guess so you reach a larger audience and uh, your product or is basically shown to them and they are interested in correct right. very good i think if you if you talking about audiences already which standard are you in number oh uh, i finished my 12th in 23 may you finished your 12th in may very good very good so i think see that's what i was talking about right uh, i think you already have started thinking from a marketer's point of view if you are if you are going ahead and talking about reach which is one of the most important things so exactly google what digital marketing helps us to do is go ahead and reach out to more number of users so that is one of the things good anybody else wants to give it a try yeah somdeep i think uh shomodipa shomodipa okay uh so go um uh uh digital marketing to me means to entice the customer to be interested in their uh, uh objects or uh, uh what we are selling like in instagram sometimes we come across uh, online shops which sell uh, certain um, certain things like uh, jewelry or books or there are jobs job opportunities so to tempt the customer is more uh, efficiently is one way for google digital marketing to work because we can reach a larger amount of audience because we are mostly on network so social networking site and internet nowadays very good i think you said we so reach a uh, reach point was already taken care by amber so somidupa also went ahead and raised one very important point which was efficiently we can go ahead and reach people. so what do you mean when you say efficiently would you want to just give me a uh, like uh, go ahead and talk about it a bit more um uh in the marketing area in network so if we are seeing we are seeing many advertisements but this is kind of like one on one if we are interested we are directly going opening the page of the shop and we are buying it instead of like seeing uh, in the tv where we have to go to the shop and search which is not so effective because in the network we just need to open the shop uh, click the link order and it will come to us directly so it's more efficient got it uh, great i think yeah so that that's basically the point that you were going ahead and talking about is personalization what ha- what also happens is you know with digital and that's one of the beauties of digital which which i'm going to go ahead and highlight later you can talk to a person who is between 18 to 24 with a different kind of communication versus a person who is between 24 uh, who is let's say working somewhere right so uh, the beauty of digital marketing is that it's you can go ahead and reach out to that particular person try and understand his fears try and uh, try and understand what are his ambitions and go ahead and change your communication in that manner so that the person is going to be more and more interested and there are higher chances of this particular person converting because now you are going ahead and talking to him in the language that he understands i think that is one of the that is one of the uh, beauties that digital marketing is also able to bring into the picture so just plainly it's no uh, what all the different kinds of promotions and services which brands do with different kinds of digital channels that is what comes into digital marketing and these are all uh, very good points that all of you have gone ahead and raised now let me go ahead and talk to you uh, tell you about what are the kind of numbers that we are looking at so if you had to talk about numbers right the reach part that amber also said and then we had the efficiency part that was also that was also highlighted so if you take a look at the reach part over here this is what is the total population of india 1.4 billion but out of the total population if you see the internet penetration it's 48.7 percentage so the internet penetration is huge right there are 692 million people who go ahead and use internet and almost half of all users are present on social media platform so almost half of all users are present on platforms like facebook they are they are present on platforms like instagram so let's say you had to go ahead and do a bigger research let's say you have to go ahead and do a research 
for that the sample that you will in order to go ahead and reach at least let's say a thousand people you will have to go ahead and spend a lot of money at the back end for you to reach these thousand people and try and understand their insights but because of platforms like an ads manager of a social media suddenly we have that data which is available to us which is in multiples of these numbers and it's not a thousand but on on if i had to give you the latest numbers on instagram it's more than 300 million people who are active users on on instagram right and with tools like audience insights you are able to understand how exactly do you how exactly do what are the different kinds of pages that these people have like what age groups do they fall in because it's all deterministic data that they are going ahead and sharing so with digital the reach becomes one one thing that is that is there plus with the help of tools we are able to go ahead and optimize it in a really good manner so what i'll do is i'll take uh, i can see somebody has raised their hand so i'll go ahead and take questions towards towards later so uh, i'll go ahead and complete a path please go ahead and uh, highlight your question in the chat i will go ahead and answer them later whenever i can okay so please go ahead and also uh, write down all your questions uh, that you have in the chat now if i had to give you an example of how the industry is growing like so if you if you uh, see the numbers from 2022 where the industry the digital industry is almost growing at a rate of 31% 31% every year now by 2024 it is estimated to be an almost 51000 crore industry and i'll see many of you going ahead and becoming part of this industry by going ahead and you know doing doing media campaigns for different kinds of brands at the back end uh if you have to come if you uh, have to compare it with with advertising obviously advertising the numbers are higher when i say higher the reach the way it is growing is not higher but the numbers in base are higher because of the reach right but still the way digital is growing i am sure that the number the percentage of growth is going to be even higher and just imagine uh, during covid also if it was not possible for us to connect with a zoom during covid we couldn't have imagined a life at the back end the way things have been changing there are enormous changes that are happening at the back end now if i had to take your attention to the split that is there uh, uh, that is there social media has got the highest spends which is almost like 29% of the spends are happening on social media followed by paid search 23% of the of the spends happening over here so what i'm going to do is i'm going to try and help you understand what are the different kinds of areas of digital marketing uh, that is that is one thing and in the interest of time we we'll might not be able to go ahead and cover all the areas but i'll try my uh, best to at least cover the areas that we have planned for so now coming to my question of why digital this is something so some of you have already gone ahead and answered uh, this question of why digital uh, the first thing is reach and personalization so the amount of reach that you are able to get through this platform is great almost 600 million people are internet users out of that almost half of the entire uh, entire population is already present on uh, different kinds of social media platforms so the reach is great plus plus the beauty of personalization so you can go ahead and talk to a student and try and talk to a, in a different manner go ahead and talk to somebody who is working so that's that's the way we can move ahead mid flight optimization what do you mean by this so let's say if you have gone ahead and done a a particular campaign let's say you are spending crores crores of rupees at the campaign in traditional advertising mid flight going ahead and doing changes is difficult because mid flight data is not available of what is the kind of communication that is already that is actually working uh, at the back end but with digital we have something called as brand lift study with the help of brand lift study what happens is you know uh, let's say you have gone ahead and done a huge youtube campaign at the back end and you are spending good amount of money on this youtube campaign but what how do you understand whether this campaign is actually working at the back end or not it's very important for you to make sense whether this campaign is working and mid flight be able to go ahead and do changes to it so something like a brand lift study helps you understand whether the communication that you have gone ahead and created at the back end is working what are the kind of changes that you should go ahead and do to this particular communication so that the message that you are trying to reach to your users is actually gone ahead and taken care of so that is that is what mid flight optimizations are are taken care of and especially if you are spending so much money at the back end 
it's very important for you to not only just keep on burning money, but being able to try and understand what is working for you, what is not working for you, and then go ahead and do these changes. Availability of data. So because now uh, we have so much data that is available to us, we are able to go ahead and do make better decisions also. So we'll be able to understand at the back end what kind of users are really liking your ad, what kind of people are converting at the back end. Uh, even to an extent of if somebody has gone ahead and clicked on your search ad or clicked on your display ad, is this the person that is going ahead and visiting stores and converting? That is the kind of data also that we are able to see at the back end. So, uh, you know, and, and it is great in your dashboard to be able to see data. It is great in your dashboard to be able to see data where you can now use this data in order to further go ahead and optimize your campaign. So let's say you'll be able to, in your dashboard, see a campaign wise data of how many, what are the kind of keywords that have really worked for you and go ahead and further increase or decrease budgets depending upon the keywords that are working for you at the back. Plus, I think one more very important point uh, that that is possible in digital, and that is one of the reasons why we should also uh, why it is it is very important for us to focus is the feedback. This is a two way system, right? Here, let's say you are going ahead and putting out uh, some communication on social media. People are going to react to it. People are going to e either like it or dislike it, and you will know their reactions right then and there. And you know what are the changes that you should go ahead and do to the uh, at the back end. So during COVID, uh, there were brands like McDonald's, Volkswagen, who went ahead and did changes to their logos. They went ahead and tried to promote social distancing with their logos. So McDonald's went ahead and changed its logo, trying to promote social distancing. At the same time, Audi also uh, tried to showcase, tried to promote social distancing through changes in its logo by changing the four circles that it has at the back. Now, uh, McDonald's got a huge backlash on social media because of this, right? Because at one place during COVID, if you are not walking the talk, you are not going ahead and doing the right things. So uh, over here, if I had to compare it with a Tata, which went ahead and did so many donations at the back end and then talked about so it's social distancing, then talked about uh, going ahead and taking care of the right things, got way more positive response. So this is a two-way system. This is a, you are able to understand the feedback of what the user is trying to think at the back end, and then go ahead and take care of that feedback as well. That is that is the reason why we should go ahead and so these these are some of the pointers that we looked at. Okay, I think there are some people who have raised your hand. Uh, Soumya Deepa, if you want to ask that question, I think I can I can quickly allow it, and then we can move ahead. Yeah, Shyam Deepa, uh, you talk now. Yeah. I want to ask, what did you mean by social distancing with logo? Yeah, so uh, the when Audi has four circles in its logo, right? So it tried to promote social distancing by going ahead and segregating its its four circles to say that uh, during COVID there was this there was this very important thing that we have to maintain distance with with users. So that's what it tried to do with its logo. Is that clear? So it's also a form of advertising for its brand. Yeah, when it's going ahead and changing its logo, it's going ahead and promoting social distancing, right? So that is the kind of change that it did on its... In fact, many brands went ahead and did that. Many brands went ahead and did changes to their logos and tried to... Uh, try Create to a good impression. And... Yes. Okay, sir. Okay, but, but as I said, McDonald's went ahead and got a, uh, got a severe backlash. Because if you are not walking the talk, you are just going ahead and trying to showcase something that you are not doing, not that you are not doing in practical terms, it is not going to work out, right? So McDonald's at the same time went ahead and faced this backlash. So backlash. Group. Okay, yeah. sir. Thank you. You can see this in their, in, on their social media platforms. Now, let's quickly move ahead to the areas that I'm going to focus on. And these are not only the areas of digital, make, uh, digital marketing. Digital marketing is way more broader. There are many more things that come into it, but in the interest of time, we'll try and cover these areas. So search engine optimization, social media marketing, search engine uh, search engine marketing over here. So you can go ahead and consider the search, the third point as search engine marketing and content marketing. Now, it is also very important for us to understand how is 
and how is an SEM different than an SEO? So search engine marketing versus a search engine optimization. I would want to also quickly take you through the history of search engine result pages. So what is a search engine result page? The minute you go ahead and search. Okay. So I will quickly, can all of you still see my screen? Uh, yes, sir. We can see your screen. You can, right? Okay. So let's say uh, I have just gone ahead and opened this up. Now what, what I will try to do is search for, let's say I am interested in, in one of these builders and I'm just trying to find, uh, let's say two BHK flats near me, right? Now, this is the keyword that I have gone ahead and used at the back end. Can you see there are some sponsored promotions that are coming up in front of this keyword, which is by 99acres and booking.com, right? So first of all, whenever I am going ahead and searching on Google, the page that pops up that is called as search engine result pages. Now you have to try and understand what is the difference between a SEM versus what is the difference between an SEO. So let's say two BHK flats near me. Now for this keyword, you can see many players are going ahead and bidding for this particular keyword, right? There's a no broker also that is bidding versus a 99 acres that is bidding versus a booking.com, right? These are all the three players that are bidding, but somehow booking.com has been able to go ahead and showcase on number one position. So, uh, and these are all, these are all, if you see, uh, Google has also, it's, it's, it's also seen that for all the four listings that I can see on the top are all the paid listings afterwards, SEO comes into the picture, right? So everything that is where you can see a sponsored in front of it, that is a paid search engine search ad, and that can be called as a search engine marketing versus everything that is an organic listing. So let's say if I had to click on this booking.com will have to go ahead and pay for this click, right? So this is a pay per click advertising. Now try and understand that it might not be just pay per click. There are many forms of advertising at the back end, but this is an auction based advertising. What do you mean by an auction based advertising? There will be multiple players who will be bidding on the same keyword and depending upon there are certain categories, uh, there are certain criterias which if you have taken care of the back end, you will be there on the number one position. So this is uh, the idea of going ahead and showcasing this to you was first of all, try and understand what is a search engine result page. Now I would want you to quickly look at the history of search engine result page as well. Uh, this is how the internet was started back in 1990, where ARPANET, which is advanced research project agency network. Now this was a, this was us defense. The, what they tried to do was try to, they wanted to go ahead and connect a few computers and they were able to connect four to five computers at the back end. That's how, uh, internet was also, that's how internet came into the picture. Now the digital market is not new. It's been there for a while, right? You can see how search engines looked like back in 1994. When we move ahead, this is uh, back in 1996, where Google's search engine was called as Backrub. So imagine Google being called uh, Backrub. This is how uh, this this was a research in progress demo of Google. Uh, so this this is how it looked like back in 1997. Versus, let's say, if we are moving to now, uh, in 2000 is when Google went ahead and launched Google AdWords, which is now called as Google Ads. Now, back in 2000, there were only 350, only 350 customers were able to go ahead and see these ads at the back, right? And this was on a very basic thing, which is called as a page rank. So basically any website which has got, and this is, this works like a vote system at the back end. So any website that has got more number of votes will be higher and that will be going ahead and show, that will be going ahead and shown on the first position. So that's how page rank worked like. But from then to now, there have been many changes at the back end because of which the, and the, the brands which were able to innovate, the brands which were able to were able to go ahead and take care of what a user wants, the brands which were able to go ahead and showcase uh, and try to showcase what exactly the users were trying to uh, search for stayed. And Google was one of these brands which was able to you know, go ahead and it, and it is still there and it has the, it has the maximum number of, it has the maximum market share as well. 
So we'll, uh, with this video, I'll try and showcase to you what are the changes that have happened and how does Google exactly, how does Google search work exactly at the back? Till now, is everything clear? All the things that we have gone ahead and discussed. Are there any questions? I can quickly take a few questions if there are and then move ahead. Okay, Arnav, I think has a question. Do you want to go ahead? Uh, Arnav, you can talk now. Arnav, am I audible? You are allowed to speak now. Okay, Arnav, in case you are not able to unmute, just put it in the chat and we'll take it at the, uh, we'll, we'll go ahead and take this question later. Okay, so now uh, what I'm trying to, what I'll go ahead and do is just play this video. Uh, if there are any questions, you can just write it down. So, uh, before you play the video, I think there's a question in the chat uh, asking okay. to explain SEO ones. Correct, I have planned for it. So that is there, uh, like I have, a, I have a PPT for it. So I'll quickly uh, go ahead and explain that. So, okay, uh, later I'll go ahead and do that. So quickly, just for uh, if I had to go ahead and respond to it in in a few uh, sentences, the way SEO is different. So everything that is paid is search engine marketing. Everything that is you are not technically paying to Google for a click that is happening at the back end. And still you are there on number one positions that is search engine marketing, search engine optimization. So the different, the one difference that is there is SEM is paid, SEO is organic. Uh, let me try and also talk to you about the other differences. For example, SEM is fast. Like let's say, for example, if you want to go ahead and get started with a campaign, you are doing everything right. You have, you have figured out your keywords. You have figured out the different kinds of uh, ads that you want to go ahead and show up. You have taken care of the of of the basic rules that Google goes ahead and tells you to take care of. You can be live within twenty four to forty eight hours after your ads are approved. But for search engine optimization, there are many things that you are going to go ahead and take care of at the back end. Okay, so with search engine optimization, you are going to go ahead and take care of the all the right things that you have to do on the website. So some of the things could be like going ahead and increasing the page load time of the website. That is one of the things. The other thing, the other uh, parts could be going ahead and improving your URL structure, having the right tags. These are the things that will fall into search engine optimization. Now uh, for you, just for now, I think uh, you will have to understand what is the difference. So for you to understand the difference, just remember two to three points. So one that SEM is paid, SEO is anything that is very, very, you are not going ahead and paying to Google at the back. End. Okay. So I will move ahead and go ahead and quickly play this video. I can see Arnav, you've raised your hand. You can just put in your questions. And after this video is played, I will take all the questions that you have. Okay. No, so actually it was raised by mistake. Achha, that's fine. Sorry. Every day, Bill it's audible to all of you. So it is audible. Okay. Every day, billions of people come here with questions about all kinds of things. Sometimes we even get questions about Google search itself, like how this whole thing actually works. And while this is a subject entire books have been written about, there's a good chance you're in the market for something a little more concise. So let's say it's getting close to dinner and you want a recipe for lasagna. You've probably seen this before, but let's go a little deeper. Since the beginning, back when the homepage looked like this, Google has been continuously mapping the web, hundreds of billions of pages, to create something called an index. Think of it as the giant library we look through whenever you do a search for lasagna or anything else. 
Now, the word lasagna shows up a lot on the web. Pages about the history of lasagna. Articles by scientists whose last name happened to be lasagna. Stuff other people might be looking for. But if you're hungry, randomly clicking through millions of links is no fun. This is where Google's ranking algorithms come into play. First, they try to understand and what you're looking for, so they can be helpful even if you don't know exactly the right words to use or if your spelling is a little off. Then they sift through millions of possible matches in the index and automatically assemble a page that tries to put the most relevant information up top for you to choose from. Okay, now we have some results. But how did the algorithms actually decide what made it onto the first page? There are hundreds of factors that go into ranking search results, so let's talk about a few of them. You may already know that pages containing the words you search for are more likely to end up at the top. No surprise there. But the location of those words, like in the page's title or in an image's caption, those are factors too. There's a lot more to ranking than just words. Back when Google got started, we looked at how pages linked to each other to better understand what pages were about and how important and trustworthy they seemed. Today, linking is still an important factor. Another factor is location, where a search happens. Because if you happen to be in Ormea, Italy, you might be looking for information about their annual lasagna festival. But if you're in Omaha, Nebraska, you probably aren't. When a web page was uploaded is an important factor too. Pages published more recently often have more accurate information, especially in the case of a rapidly developing news story. Of course, not every site on the web is trying to be helpful. Just like with robocalls on your phone or spam in your email, there are a lot of sites that only exist to scam, and every day scammers upload millions more of them. So just because instantvirusdownload.net lists the words lasagna recipe 400 times, that doesn't mean it's going to help you make dinner. We spend a lot of time trying to stay one step ahead of tricks like these, making sure our algorithms can recognize scam sites and flag them before they make it to your search results page. So let's review. Billions of times a day, whenever someone searches for lasagna, or resume writing tips, or how to swaddle a baby, or anything else, Google software locates all the potentially relevant results on the web, removes all the spam, and ranks them based on hundreds of factors like keywords, links, location, and freshness. Okay, good time to take a breath. <sighs> this last part is about how we make changes to search, and it's important. Since 1998, when Google went online, people seem to have found our results pretty helpful. But the web is always changing, and people are always searching for new things. In fact, one in every seven searches is for something that's never been typed into the search box before, by anyone, ever. So we're always working on updates to search, thousands every year. Which brings up a big question. How do we decide whether a change is making search more helpful? Well, one of the ways we evaluate asking people like you. Every day, thousands of search quality raters look at samples of search results side by side, then give feedback about the relevance and reliability of the information. To make sure those evaluations are consistent, the raters follow a list of search quality evaluator guidelines. Think of them as our publicly available guide to what makes a good result good. Oh, and one last thing to remember. We use responses from raters to evaluate changes, but they don't directly impact how search results are ranked. So there you have it. Every time you click search, our algorithms are analyzing the meaning of the words in your search, matching them to the content on the web, understanding what content is most likely to be helpful and reliable, and then automatically putting it all together in a neatly organized page designed to get you the info you need. All in, oh, 0.81 seconds, wow. Anyone else ready for dinner? Interested in learning more? We've got a Okay, so I think uh, quickly, so that talked about, you know, what are the factors that are taken into consideration before going ahead and giving a rank to the website that you have to the key, with the help of keywords that the people are going ahead and searching at the back. Uh, on the chat, could you just write down all the factors that it said are really important at the back end, uh, are really important and which are some of the top factors, which is why Google goes ahead and ranks a certain page. Now, why is that really important? If you see 70% of the consumers start their online experience with a search, however, 85% of the searchers don't look past the first page result. Nobody wants to go to the second page of the search result. 
uh, there's also there's also a saying at the back end that the best place to go ahead and hide a dead body is is on the page two of Google. Nobody wants to go, nobody wants to go ahead and be there, right? And at the same time, the position of your uh, listing is also really important because if you are not there on number one position, you are losing many clicks. So you can see on the left hand side, rank one the percentage of people clicking on your link, 25%. So let's say there are 100 people who are going to see your ad. Only if you are there on number one position, 25 people might click on your link. And out of that also, if you are there on, if you are not there in the first page, there are lesser probabilities of you going ahead and getting these clicks at the back. Okay. And 25% is a good number uh, to have because after your click also, there will be some people who you will lose out and then the remaining people will be there on your website. So this is over here, intent plays a bigger role over here. If you are relevant to what the person is going ahead and searching for, that is, the, the, and there are higher probabilities of you reaching out to the right user because uh, with search, the intent is very clear, right? You know what the particular person is searching for. You know whether he is looking for, whether he's interested in cheap products, he's interested in high-end products because that is visible in his search term. So that's how you go ahead and reach out to these people also. Now, so this was the question also that I had. So I'll quickly go ahead and talk about the difference between SEO and SEM once again. So let's say this is how our search engine result page looks like. Anything which is sponsored or there is an ad written in front of it is search engine marketing. So whatever whatever is sponsored and there is an ad or sponsored written in front of it, that is a part of SEM. Anything that is because of uh, and which whatever which is not sponsored and is coming out organically, which is coming up on the positions organically, that is because of your SEO efforts at the back. So what are some of the SEO efforts that you can go ahead? Some of the SEO efforts are on-page optimization versus like you can go ahead and do things to your website, try and make your websites load, website page, go ahead and load faster. Now see, try and understand with that with this session, I'll not be able to get into the details of it. So I'll be going ahead and just giving you a glimpse of what the, what the differences between SEM and SEO are. And you can reach out to me later also if you have any uh, questions. So now going to social media marketing with social media marketing, there are different kinds of things that you can do. Uh, just posting on social media is not marketing. You can go ahead and get into the strategy part of it. You can go ahead and try and understand how do you reach out to your audiences in a much more better manner. When you are reaching, when you are working on your audiences, it's very important for you to try and try and reach out to exactly the audience that you want to reach out to because you are going ahead and spending money over here, right? So whenever you're doing paid social media, you're going ahead and spending money. And if you're spending money, it's it's best for you to reach out to the right set of users. Otherwise, the money that you are going ahead and spending is also going to be a waste. If you're reaching out to users who are not interested in you, that is going to be a wasted impression for you at the back. Because for every impression, if you are having, if and for every impression also, you might be going ahead and paying, right? So social media marketing, uh, so one is the content marketing part of it. The other is the paid marketing part of it. I will quickly move ahead to what is content marketing. Now content is also called as the king of, uh, because you are able to go ahead and connect with the users more. You are able to go ahead and add value to what the user is trying to search for. Only if you are able to add the value, he is going to remain a follower with you. Right. So you will see all these, all these Instagram influencers and followers, uh, trying to go ahead and get more, more number of response, more number of followers at the back end. They are in some or the other manner, trying to add value to their users. They are either, either entertaining their users or they have been going ahead and sharing content that is in some or the other manner useful to the user at the back. end. It's also very difficult to go ahead and make a viral campaign. Unless, if you are a brand. And you want to, there are positive messages that you want to go ahead and pass out. It becomes more difficult for you to create content, which is shareable. 
Now, you know, there are many influencers. You must be thinking that they have suddenly, their videos are suddenly in much more demand and their videos are suddenly, they, they are now getting reach more than ever at the back end. But there's a lot of effort that they are going ahead and taking on a regular basis. They have a proper strategy in place. They are going, they have understood what their users are like. They are going through their comment section on a regular basis, trying to understand what the users are liking, what the users are not liking. They have understood the pulse of their audiences and that is the reason why they are able to go ahead and get those kinds of followers on their pages. So I'll quickly move to now the some of the digital marketing career prospects. What are the things that you can go ahead and do? And hence, uh, these are all the roles that you can be in if you're interested in being into the digital marketing industry and not limited to these. There's a huge list of uh, all the different kinds of profiles that you can go ahead and be a part of. So right now, what we talked about search, you can also go ahead and execute this. So if you are someone who is trying to go ahead and ensure that your brands are there on number one positions, you can be a search specialist, which is also called as a pay-per-click expert. Then there's social media marketing, SEO expert. We'll, we'll try and go ahead and discuss all of these in detail. So these are different kinds of roles that you can get into if you are going ahead and targeting the digital marketing industry. I'll quickly move ahead to the paid media department. Now paid media department is the department which goes ahead and uses, uh, which goes ahead and uses different kinds of budgets to reach out to its audiences. So what is the role at the back end with a paid media department? You are managing a portfolio of and it can be on any platform. You are either going ahead and managing a portfolio for your brand on search, on social. It can be other platforms that you are going ahead and working with. But it's best for you to understand and know everything. Uh, you So the, the best thing is if you are able to understand data, right? You are not just a postman who is going ahead and passing on information from one place to another. If you are able to understand data and make sense of it, you can go ahead and challenge the briefs you can go ahead and challenge the work that has been done and go ahead and add real value to the work that you are going ahead and doing at the back. So here, mostly the role is to try and understand your audiences in a much more better manner with, with a, as a paid media person. Basically, nobody knows your audiences in much more better manner than a paid media person because he has, he has gone ahead and done extensive research on your audiences with tools plus with the help of research, uh, with the help of be it qualitative or quantitative research at the back end. So what are some of the attributes? If some, if you are someone who is who has strong analytical skills, you like MS Excel, uh, now Microsoft Excel. So if some of you have not been introduced to this tool, this is one tool that you should try and learn in detail. Uh, if you are data driven, you by just looking at the numbers, you are able to understand what it is trying to say. And you are able to understand what kind of story can you go ahead and form and how can you go ahead and showcase these numbers so that you can showcase the impact that you have gone ahead and created. Then this is this is the department for you. What are the different kinds of roles that you can look at? So search specialist being one of the roles, social media marketing expert, paid media expert, paid media, media expert is someone who is doing everything. He is not just a search social, but he knows other platforms also. Then there is Amazon marketing services. Amazon is, is also really important because the most number of product searches are happening on Amazon, right? Uh, even higher than, the, than what they are happening on Google. So if you're a paid uh, executive, this is what you will be doing on a regular basis. This is a screenshot from a Google ads dashboard. So you can see the campaign then you can see the total number, the numbers that these campaigns are, are uh, getting. So, you know, what you are doing is you're doing many more things. This is just the front end of, of the dashboard. You are at the back end going ahead and optimizing your campaigns, creating ads, working with the kind of keywords that are really important for you to go ahead and uh, get users who are, who are going to convert. So all these things you're going ahead and doing at the back end. This is where, you know, the search ads that we looked at with the help of Google ads dashboard, the search ads that we looked at, this is the place from where they go ahead and run that. Then if you are a social media paid person, you can see like as users, you, you must have come across many ads, right? As users, you would have come across many ads, but with 
uh, with the paid social media team, you're working on the back end of it. So you are working on creating different kinds of formats of ads. You're working on creating the strategies at the back end. You're working on, let's say there's a huge product launch that is there at the back end. You're working on going ahead and make, you're working on going ahead and coming up with the strategy for that particular product launch. Okay, I think uh, what I can do is I can quickly uh, take you through this and at the end, go ahead and take any questions that you will have. So web development is the other uh, role that is available. As a web development person, if you're someone who is technical in nature, you understand coding. You So some of you would have gone ahead and done HTML as a language in your 12th. Uh, if you understand the different kinds of languages, you know how to go ahead and do coding. But now with, with the tools coming into the picture, with ready-made uh, themes coming in, it is more than, it is easier than ever to be a part of these teams. You will be able to understand uh, this, this is, this is a technical role. And at the back end, what you are doing is, so every website, if I had to just tell you in brief, I'll just take example of Kolte Patil, which is a real estate brand. So every website has a back end code to it, right? So if you're a web development person, you are working on creating different kinds of landing pages for the users. You're trying to understand the UI UX. You're trying to understand user user experience. You're trying to understand what are the changes that you can do at the back end, which is going to help the end user to engage with you in a much more better manner. And what are the different kinds of designations that you can look at? So you can be a web developer, front end developer, UI, uh, UI UX expert, software uh, analyst as well. These are the kind of roles that you can look at if you're into web development. Finally, coming to content marketing. Uh, so uh, as a content marketer, you are responsible for all the written content on different kinds of brand, uh, the way they go ahead and interact with their users. And they really understand their audiences well. They're able to put out messages in a much more strong and crisp manner, which you know connects with the end user. That is what you can go ahead and do as a content marketing person. But you have to also understand what are the different kinds of formats that are available there. You have to understand your user is in which phase of the journey and go ahead and create content accordingly. SEO specialist, we have talked about what is, what is an SEO uh, search engine optimization. So over here, you're trying to go ahead and organically bring your website on number one position on Google search engine. All the things that you are doing at the back end, be it you are working with your website code, you're trying to work on your headline one, headline two tags. So these are different kinds of tags that you could have at the back end. You are trying to ensure that the loading page of your uh, website is lesser with, and especially SEO expert is valued a lot because SEO expert is going ahead and building, going ahead and getting this much getting eyeballs without any paid money at the back end. And if you're able to go ahead and get the right eyeballs for your brand, you have to target the right keywords. If you have understood what are the right kind of keywords that I'm going ahead and targeting, you will have to have then go ahead and sync up your entire strategy around those keywords. Go ahead and ensure that you are taking care of the content that is written on your website. The content that is there on your website is fresh. All these things are thing, all these things become really important if you are working as a SEO specialist. Finally, this is the other position that I would like to talk about, which is account manager. If you're someone you know who who does not who is not very technical, but you uh, and uh, it's it's a value add if you're technical, but you're a team player. You are able to un, you're able to communicate with stakeholders in a really good manner. You're able to understand what are the requirements from your team and pass it on to the client, understand what the client really wants, pass it on, but ensure that they are getting the right strategy. That's when you can get into account management. Account management is a much more important role. As a project manager, you might be responsible for an end-to-end -end development of a brand. You might be responsible for end-to-end -end performance, key performance, uh, performance KPIs, so uh, whether they are looking for increase in their sales, whether they are in looking for increase in their brand awareness, 
So all the different kinds of objects, you should be able to transform your business objectives into real KPIs with your campaigns. You should be able to understand your business objectives and try and convert them into KPIs for your campaigns as well. So that's what you can, uh, you if you're, so basically what are the attributes? If you're a team player, you're interested in strategy, you think you can go ahead and do project management. So at this stage, I would, I would suggest all of you to be more and more open to trying to under uh, to talking to different people, try and do networking, try and reach out to different kinds of users, have clarity on what are the things that you should, that you would want to go ahead and do later. Okay, so uh, how the learning process should be. So this is how, this is how your learning process should be. Uh, it cannot be just theory with digital marketing because there are hardly any books which are really updated it needs to be there needs to be a practical angle to it so you need to get exposures with the different kinds of tools that are available so there's a micro and there's a macro right so micro is all about going ahead and taking care of the tools trying to understand how the tools are done but the macro is about trying to understand the bigger things strategy how are you going to come up with different kinds of how are you going to ensure that you are meeting different kinds of objectives at the back end? So you need to understand a mix of both questions. So you should be willing to go ahead and ask many questions. You need to understand that as many questions you're going to go ahead and ask, the better your understanding is going to be at the back end. And these people who are going ahead and taking sessions for you need to be certified and need to be need to have worked at earlier in the industry so that they're able to understand what they're talking about. They're able to, you know, pass it on in the, pass it on in the right manner. There are many uh, digital marketers who don't know many things at the back end, but they still go ahead and, and, and take sessions. So it's very important for you to recognize the right talent and try and reach out to them so that you are able to uh, get the right kind of information, industry examples and videos and presentations. So that's how, that is how the strategy, that is how we go ahead and do it at Flame also. Now, what I will do is I'll quickly open it up for any questions that are there and we can go ahead and take all the questions that you have. So we have one question in the Q&A box. Yeah. Uh, question is by Karan. Uh, they're asking, how is Adobe Analytics different from Google? What is its scope in future learning? Sorry. Yeah. So let me just, could you just repeat the question? So the question so is, this is, this is, see, Adobe Analytics is just uh, one more tool that is out there for you with Adobe Anal Analytics. You can go ahead and so it is related with web analytics. You can try and understand, let's say all the users who are coming to your site, what is the kind of time that they are, am I audible? Can all of you hear me? Uh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. You're audible now. Yes, sir. Yeah. So I'm saying, see, Adobe Analytics is just one more tool of analytics that is available to you for, you know, there are different kinds of analytics. You have to understand what is web analytics, app analytics. So anything that is that is related with your website comes under web analytics. Anything that has to do with your app comes under app analytics. And what are these tools? So these tools help you understand once the user has come onto your website, how is he going ahead and interacting with your uh, with your website? Is he spending enough time? You are able to try and understand the user journey. He, uh, what are the referral links that this user came from? And if these referral link links are important to you, you know who are the users that are converting? So with this tool, you are also able to understand the backend analytics. You are able to understand, let's say, what are the different kinds of campaigns that are actually working for you. You are also able to understand how should you go ahead and do changes into your campaigns at the back end. What are the different kinds of changes that you should do at the back end for you to, uh, for you to go ahead and first of all, once you have understood the data, you use that data and do changes so that you are meeting the objectives that you have planned. for. Okay. Any other questions, please feel free to ask. This is my email ID also. You can reach out to me later in case you have 
more questions? Uh, so there is a question by Aryaman in the chat box. Uh, they ask that, um, sir, can you please elaborate on P square? Do we need to be a uh, net savvy to become a digital marketing guy? Do you need to be a net savvy? Yeah. So see, one of you definitely need to understand uh, the dashboard. So P square is basically practice and practice. You need to have a good understanding about different kinds of tools. Now to start with, you might not have all of that and that is completely fine. To start with, you might just know what the area is. You might, let's say you have got an entry as a project management person, but as in when you grow, it is, it is very important for you to know the tools also. So that if, whenever you are going ahead and reaching out to the client, trying to go ahead and explain it to him, you at the back end also have clarity on what are the things, uh, on how it, how does it work exactly? Otherwise, you're just going ahead and saying things in the air, and most of the times you don't understand what are the things uh, that are done at the back end and how is it done exactly at the back end. And if you are not able to, if you are not clear on how is it exactly done at the back end, most of the times you end up confusing with the process, and most of the times you don't have clarity on that, which is which becomes one of the reasons why you know clients are not able to. Uh, get clarity and they are not able to go ahead and then take right decisions that are that are required in order to make it better. So P square is practice and practice on dashboards and different kinds of tools. Now, so there are many free tools that are available for you. You can just go ahead and create accounts. For example, Google Ads is free. And but there are many like some data points might not be visible to you. Like you might not see exact search volumes, but you are able to see a range of search volumes, which is good enough for you to Go ahead and plan your campaigns uh, and understand the tools. So uh, what you can do is if you want a list of certifications that you should do to get started with, please write an email to me. I'll give you links of the certifications that you should do to get started with. Okay. Any other questions, Sunilesh? Uh, sir, can we? Uh, rec yes, we have one question in the uh, QA. It says, It is by Satyajit. Sir, how will AI affect the digital marketing domain in future? Correct. So, AI has already uh, started with, a, with chat GPT is coming into the picture. Artificial intelligence, first of all, is helping because it has a lot of data at the back end. Uh, and it is also able to do things way faster because there's that feedback uh, thing also. You are giving, going ahead and giving out, to, uh, giving out data to these tools at the back end. So they are able to go ahead and make decision making also. So with AI, I think what is going to happen is many a times the since if you had to go ahead and do many things manually, it would have taken a lot more time for you to go ahead and do these things manually. But with AI coming into the picture. Now, because for you, it has become really easy for that data to be evaluated at the back end and for, for it to go ahead and make right decisions, you can automate many things. So you can automate bidding, you can go ahead and automate ad creation. And when once you go ahead and do these things at the back end, you can many times. So from my experience also, you can see better results as well, right? Because there are many things which are manually not possible for you, even if you go ahead and work on it day and night and spend hours of work at the back end. There are many things manually that are not possible for you. But with the help of automation, these things are going to be taken care of. So, you know, a lot of automation is, is something that we can go ahead and see in the future. Yes. So Sunilish, in case there are any other questions, please let me know. Yes, sir. So um i see that some some of you are asking your question in the chat box my request is to ask your questions in the q a that would really be helpful so we have one more question um sir can i just get into this field like i think companies also require to hire digital marketers so how can we as digital marketers reach out to them okay so here this uh you need to have the right, first of all, you need to be lucky to have the right contact. Let's say there are different kinds of brands and agencies that are reaching out and you have the right set of skills at that time. You can directly reach out to the HR 
uh, who is hiring at the back end. But if you are in your 12th standard, I think, uh, see, one thing is definitely there, there's no limitation. So you can definitely, you can even start up your own brand. So I, I have seen many young people going ahead and starting up their own brands and doing really well. So there's no limitation, but uh, ensuring that, you, so what, the, there are a few steps that you can go ahead and take. You can start building the right contacts, know what are the bigger brands that are available uh, that are there in India who do uh, who go ahead and take care of digital mandates. So you can some of the bigger agents, you can go ahead and think about some of the bigger networks like Dan, which is the Enso Agents Network, then there's Group M, Group M. Then there are many other networks also that you can go ahead and search for. Start reaching out and connecting with HR professionals. And whenever, basically, whenever they have a requirement, plus brand side, there are many brand side uh, bigger bigger accounts which have their own in-house team. So you have to go ahead and get started with building the right set skill sets. Once you have built the right skill sets, have the right contacts. Once you have gone ahead and done that, start applying at a different. But it's not very difficult for you to go ahead. And... Yes, sir. I think so. That is a that has answered the question. Uh, moving on to the next question uh, by Arnav. Uh, Arnav asks, uh, I was wondering, will the search engines also work on the algorithms of the user as it will refer to the previous searches? So definitely it has all that data at the back end. Uh, but the algorithm, the way AdRank functions is, is, is like they have their algorithm set already. And earlier it was a complete black box, which is a, which it is not now anymore. They you have some understanding on what are the kind what are the places that you should work with in order to improve your ad ranks. So it can be your bids, it can be your quality score at the back end. There's so the way ad rank functions is now I'll need you know many more sessions in order for you to go ahead and explain this in detail. But the way ad rank functions is it's a mix of bid plus the quality score that you have at the back end. Now quality score can depend upon the how relevant your website is to what the users have searched at, uh, searched. But Google definitely has that data. And many a times it uses the back end, the bench, many a times it uses historical data for it to go ahead and showcase ads in a better manner. Okay, so many a times it uses historical data for it to go ahead and showcase ads in a better manner. Yes, sir. Moving on uh, to the next question we have. Yes. Hey, Siddid, if I'm pronouncing the name right. Sir, what are the roles of a social media marketing agency? So as an agency, you are going, you can either be involved with the content marketing mandate, the paid mandate. So uh, as an agency, uh, you can be, you can be going, you, you have different kinds of objectives that you are working on for the brand, right? The brand could have sales mandate. The brand, brand can go ahead and say that they want to go ahead and increase their sales. They can say that they want to, they want you to work on their perception. They want you to try and understand what the users are thinking about them and then come up with a communication that is going to change that. So there are many things that you can go ahead and uh, do. The, the, those are the functions of a social media agency, but that completely depends upon the kind of objective that the brand has and the kind of brief that the brand has, which usually arises from the challenges that the brand is facing internally. So depending upon what are the kind of, so many a times brands reach out to agencies because they are not able to scale up. They will have their own in-house teams, but they reach out to agencies because they are not able to scale up for them. They were able to only apply their, uh, they were able to only apply their uh, understanding only to a certain limit. So when they have to scale up, they reach out to agencies because they are also the experts who can help. Yes, sir. Uh, I think this question has been answered by Azin who asks, uh, sir, do you think AI will take over the digital marketing field in the future? You have answered this question. Yeah, I think we have discussed that. Already. Others, if you have any question, uh, we could uh, take it for the next five minutes before I put up the Google form, please feel free to either raise your hand or maybe put in your questions in the Q&A box.
Okay. Okay, sir, uh, I think we have no more questions. So before I before I uh, upload the link to the form, uh, the I would like to announce the next session. So firstly, thank you everyone for attending the session. I hope everyone has uh, will be filling up the feedback form for which we'll be receiving a letter of participation by next week. Uh, talking of the next session, uh, it will be on the two essential approaches for producing a hit per Derek Thompson, author of The Hit Makers, How to Succeed in an Age of Distraction by Professor Gangaraju, who is a senior academic specialist, film and television management. For most of the media and entertainment industry, the holy grail is to produce a hit. The endeavor is to see to it your content reaches the maximum number of audience or consumers. In his bestseller, Atlantic Senior, editor Derek Thompson shares two essential approaches for devising a hit. So this session curated by the Film and Television Management Area Chair at Flame University, Professor Gangaraju, will walk its participant through those two approaches which seem a bit counterintuitive or not commonplace for the layperson. At Flame University, the Film and Television Management area has been put together with the triad of art, craft, and management aspects of film and TV industries. It was great having you all here with us. See you in the next session. Thank you.